basically uh, we will uh, we will look at the files i need you to follow up uh, with the files that you have but the first thing is uh, for you to pay attention on what i'll be doing and then uh, i'll give you a few minutes uh, to be able to practice uh, on the same so uh, unless there is any concern any any other issue um, we can start off our class any issue please unmute yourself if you, if you want to say something and then mute yourself after you say it good so i'll assume that everyone uh, is consenting that we start the class so let's go to our look up uh, functions uh, file good so if somebody wants to know whether you understand excel they'll ask you about vlookup so vlookup is one of the most uh, popular functions in excel and it is used for looking up information uh, from one table and returning um, information uh, given a column so for example in this table that we have here is a table of data for employees so we have the employees names we have the building we have the department we have the status we have the hire date we have the number of years we have the benefits we have salary and the tax rate so um, on your right you can be able to see there is a, a, a table here uh, given salary ranges and then the applicable tax, tax rate so our duty here will be to use a VLOOKUP to be able to help us um, find the tax rate that is applicable given um, the, the, the salary. So uh, for you to be able to do that, um, you need first of all to understand how a VLOOKUP uh, is written. And how a function is written is called syntax. What do I mean by syntax? Uh, a function starts with an equal sign. So to trigger any uh, function, you need to put the equal sign. Then you give Excel a hint of the function that you want uh, to use. And most of the Excel functions, you find that um, their names uh, correspond to what they do. So VLOOKUP is for looking up information from tables. Uh, SUM is for summing. Um, average is for averaging, um, and so forth and so forth. So VLOOKUP basically will help us to, uh, to be able to look up for information. So we want to use the function VLOOKUP. So you click and start typing for it. Once you type, um, you, you'll get um, various options. Once the option you want is selected, you tab and the, 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 whole, um, the whole function is completed and then you have the op opening bracket. So the first thing on a VLOOKUP function, as you can see here, we are getting hints from Excel. So the, the first thing that you need to put is an argument for the lookup value. This means, what are you looking up for? What information are you looking up? And in this case, we'll be looking for this salary, this salary that you can see here. The second argument, uh, anything that you find in these, crossed, uh, these brackets are called arguments. Uh, of course, there are uh, functions in Excel that ha uh, don't have any arguments. They just have open brackets. Functions like today, now, they are very easy to write. And I can show you that right now, today, Function called today returns today's date. 
it doesn't have any arguments. You don't put in anything inside the, that uh, are those brackets. So it's very easy to write. But the, then you have other functions that um, have so many arguments, and you have to put all the arguments. If you see anything with a cornered brackets, as you can see, the word rage uh, rookup is held within uh, cornered brackets. Uh, that means that that argument is optional. You can put it or you, uh, as it depends on what you're working on, you can uh, fail to put that lookup and the function will work. The other arguments, you have to put them. They are mandatory. The lookup value, the table array, and the uh, quorum index. For the last one, you'll find that um, each and every function has its own defaults such that if you don't put that argument, uh, Excel will assume a, a certain default. And we learn that as we go by and uh, as we practice in Excel. So as I said, the first uh, item is what you're looking up for. So we are looking up for this salary in this table. The second argument is the, the table array. Every time I put a comma, you can see that the hint uh, that is, um, is in bold font changes. So arguments within a function are terminated by using a comma. I know some of you are uh, feeling like we are doing IT, but uh, this is very important uh, to accountants, and I'll show you the reason as to why this is very important. So the other, if I put a comma, then the other function, uh, the other um, argument is the quorum index number. So what it means is that we are looking for this salary from this table, but we want to return the tax rate. So it's asking us where is the information we want to return here located in the table that we are looking for it from. So. Um, as you'll see in a moment, we, we always count our quorums uh, from the left. That is quorum one, quorum two. So in that argument, we'll put a two because the information we want returned uh, where we are putting the function is in quorum number two. And that is very, very important. And um, as you'll see, it is, it is the biggest um, failure of the VLOOKUP function, especially when you're using uh, tables that uh, will increase in quorums and rows. So um, I want us to go back and write our function, but before we get there, um, let me know if there is anyone who has a specific question up to that point. So unmute yourself and then you speak and then mute yourself. Thank you so much guys uh, for obeying the rules. So far so good. Good, I think we are doing well. So uh, to put the VROOKUP function, you say equals VROOKUP, you hint to Excel, then you tab. Once you tab, uh, the function is completed. So as I said, we are looking up for this salary from this table. I'll select the whole quorum because uh, I don't have information, any other information down here. If you want, you can select your table only, but then you need to do something called absolute referencing. Absolute referencing is rocking of cells. And you do the rocking of cells uh, by using uh, F4. Depending on how your computer is, you need to hold down your function key and the F4. The function keys are on top of your, of your keyboard and then the functional key is uh, on the left, 
I'm using a Renovo. Uh, I don't think the other computers, but it's somewhere next to control, alt, and the Windows key, somewhere. So depending on how your keyboard is configured, you have to hold the function key and the F4, so that then you can put the dollar signs. So I'm doing that, and it puts the dollar sign. So what it means is that our table will not uh, be moving as we copy our formula downwards. And I'll make uh, this mistake deliberately. I'll avoid the Dora signs. Uh, I'll remove the Dora signs so that you can see what I'm saying in a moment. So again, we are looking up for the salary in this table. And we want to return the information in column number two, column number one, and then two. Quorum index number is two. And then it's an approximate match. Why is it an approximate match? Because whatever we are looking up for here, you can't find it exactly here. So for example, this is a tax table and it is um, configured in bars, like between 5,000 to, uh, I think that is 25 or something, uh, 25,000 the person will pay uh, 1%. Uh, between 35 and 45, the person will pay uh, a tax rate of 6% and so forth and so forth. So there is no way we are going to get this figure exactly 61, uh, 760 in this table. So we are going to use an approximate match. And you can select that or use one. The other alternative is an exact match, and uh, we'll do an example for that. So hold your horses, you'll be able to understand that in a moment. So then once you're done, don't uh, sweat the small stuff, don't put the, the, the last bracket, just enter. So let's see whether our formula worked. So we have the salary of 61,760, uh, 61,760 is between these two figures. So the rate that is applicable is the rate on uh, for eight percent because these are tax but 50, between 55,000 and 65, the tax rate that will be applicable is the eight percent tax. And then we can uh, copy our formula down. And how do we do that? Uh, if you can look at our data, if you can hold down your control key and the shift key down, and then the down arrow key, it will take you to the last, uh, the last uh, line in, in our data. And you can see we have 742 uh, lines of data. So now it will take you ages to copy this formula down once like this. You might uh, go to retirement before you reach the end of the data. So what you do, you put your cursor on the lower right uh, corner of your cell. Then when it changes to a plus sign, then you double click and the formula gets filled up. Now we have gotten an error and we deliberately got this error because we forgot to rock our table. So let's see what is happening here. So as you can see, our table kept on, kept on changing. And that is why it's giving us irrelevant uh, or an error um, return. So we need to go back and do function F4 so that we can lock this area. And as I said, depending on your keyboard, um, you use the function F4 key uh, to put the dollar signs. Once we do that, control enter, and then we copy that formula downwards. Good. So any question so far? Please don't chicken out. Uh, if you have a question, please ask, ask for it. I'm very particular about my students understanding what I'm training, so I don't want to be alone. This is a function that I think is very important to any accountant. And uh, unless you know this function, uh, then you'll be in, in trouble because you'll be spending a lot of time uh, 
working on data sets uh, that uh, you can have Excel work uh, for you. So if you have any particular question, please ask, for, uh, ask, ask, it, ask it now before we proceed. Anyone? Anyone? Do I give you more time to uh, have a look at it? Eddie, you can say something. You seem very comfortable with that. <laughs> You are still muted. Unmute yourself. So for those who have just joined, uh, please mute yourself unless you're talking. So anyone, anyone, I want to continue. I want to proceed. Good. So that's a VLOOKUP. Now, we also have another uh, function called HLOOKUP, although it's, it is not as popular as um, a VLOOKUP because um, it, it helps us to look for data in horizontally arranged tables. So if we can create another column here, and call it tax rate. Now, if you go to your extreme, extreme right, hi, Jerida. Hi. Yeah, please mute yourself. Karibu sana. Good. So, if you uh if you go to your right you can you can be able to see there is um there is a table on your right and this table is horizontally arranged it's the same information so if you have your table or data arranged uh, in a uh, in a horizontal manner of course it doesn't look uh, clean it doesn't look neat so you never really find these kind of tables and you can always transpose your tables from um, from vertically arranged to horizontally arranged uh, from horizontally arranged to vertically arranged so that you can use the video cup so basically we had this table uh, transposed to uh, look like this and uh, there you use a function called HLOOKUP. H stands for horizontal. So HLOOKUP tab. And here, it's the same information we are looking up for. So we are looking up for this salary from this table. So select this table, control, control A, control A. Uh, for some reason that is not working and then remember to always lock absolute reference uh, your information function f4 comma we are looking up for the information in row number two so we want what whatever in is in row number two to be returned and then the the row index number is two and then it's 
it's an exact match. So control enter. Sorry, uh, we are looking up for that in this table h2 in the particular table we want the information to be returned sorry this is supposed to be a true so tab yeah because we are looking up for numbers and not uh, characters good so as you can see it is working in a similar manner so unless we have any question there we can proceed any particular question please feel free to unmute yourself and speak and then you mute yourself I didn't doubt there is nobody who has a question on absolute reference. You might not have a question on uh, on uh, on zero cup, but absolute referencing sometimes becomes confusing. So, Eddie, you have something? Yeah, can I ask a question on uh, H lookup? Eh? Yes, please. Okay, I've gotten up to the point of uh, absolute referencing, but now there's the true and uh, the true false. I didn't get that as well. Yes, um, what we are talking about here is um, the kind of data we are looking up for. So let me get back here. So remember, we are looking up for the salary, isn't it? We are looking up for the salary. But if you look at our table, we are looking for 61, 760, or whatever figure, but there is no exact figure here that matches that figure. So you have to look for an approximate, a figure that is close to the, the, the particular figure that you are looking for. So, and that is why even on VLOOKUP, we put here, that it's a true or uh, we, we put true because it's approximate match. And as I said, we use um, either a one for true or approximate match or a zero for false or exact match. And I said, I'll demonstrate how we use the false exact match uh, argument. But for this particular case, we are looking for a number that we know absolutely you cannot find it in our table. So we are looking for figures that are near that particular figure. So I'll come back to you. Um, uh, Eddie, uh, did I appeal to your question? Good. So any other particular question? Even uh, repeaters like uh, Jerida, please don't shy off asking. I know you like, like attending my classes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so don't shy off. Good. Um, somebody needs to mute themselves. Uh, I don't know who this is. If you're not talking, please mute yourself. Timothy, please mute yourself. Good. Um, so that was uh, approximate match. Let's have a look at exact match. So the first thing in Excel is to understand the data that you're working with. So here we have uh, two types of data. Uh, we have uh, student uh, exams uh, ratings. So we have the name of the student. We have the rating that has been given by the teacher. Uh, remember, like KCSE, you don't have a numerical score. You only have A, B, 
uh, Cyprus and such. So this is the as, a same scenario whereby you are having a rating as opposed to a numerical score. And the teacher needs to populate the numerical score of the student. And the teacher has a key uh, on the left uh, with uh, showing what particular rating uh, is equivalent to in terms of numerical score. And our duty here will be to look at the rating. And then from this table, we return the numerical score. So the same way is equals VLOOKUP tab. The lookup value is the rating. Where do we find it? We are going to find it from our table. You can choose to select the whole table or uh, you use absolute referencing. So in this case, I use the whole table because I know there is no any information uh, down there. And what is our quorum index? Where do we want the numerical score to come from? from the table that we are looking up information from. It is in quorum number one, two. So you put a two there. And as you guessed, this is an exact match because the information we are looking for, we have exact match for that information. For example, pick poor. We have the word poor exactly here. So here we are using an exact match. So you select uh, uh, exact match or put a zero and then control enter. And then you copy down your formula and you can check whether your formula has given you the right uh, information. So for example, satisfactory is 78, satisfactory is 78. Uh, fair 71, uh, poor, 65 and so forth and so forth. So you can imagine um, uh, like a lecturer who has a thousand students and they want to populate this kind of information, a VROCAP will come in handy. So let me get back to you if you have any particular question on this. So the first scenario we were using an approximate match. Yes, please. A question. How did you copy? Did you just drag it down or you control V? Good. Now the formula. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me go back. Control Z. So uh, we had said this, but I bet Jeridan uh, joined us later. So for you to be able to copy down the information so that you don't leave this particular cell when you're entering the function, you do control enter once you're done. So that um, the, 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 the active cell doesn't uh, change. So you do control enter. Once you do control enter, you take your cursor to the light bottom corner until it changes to the this lean cross sign. Remember, this is for dragging, this is for copying down. So once it changes to that plus sign, you double click. And once you double click, uh, it fills the information downwards. So uh, I can see you nodding. Anyone else who has a question? Particular question? Yeah, I have a question. Yes, George. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I want to be able to know how to, to determine the particular type of data so that uh, I can use either the approximate or the true match. Yeah, thank you so much, George. Uh, you have taken me back uh, to something that I had forgotten to mention. Um, the VROOKUP function uh, is very specific on how you arrange your data. 
you have to make sure that the information you are looking up for is on the leftmost corner. So uh, let's go back to the approximate match. The approximate match, whatever we are looking up for, which is the salary, has to be the leftmost from the table you are looking up for that information. So there is no way you are going to look, uh, if this table, for example, was a rate like this, there is no way you could have worked with a VROC. Because uh, the moment the VROCAP requires you to select the, uh, the first um, uh, co column, which has the information that you're looking up, uh, up for, and that has to be the leftmost uh, item. So getting back to uh, George's question, uh, how do you determine whether we are going to use uh, an approximate match or an exact match? And for that, I give an opportunity to one of the good students I have to explain. I, I know somebody will want to explain that. So anyone, anyone who wants to explain the difference between approximate and um, exact match? In your own words. Can I try? I can. Oh, OK, sorry. Yeah, Nicholas, please go ahead. Somebody has said before me, so let me, I don't know, or I'd still try. No, you are the one on the floor. OK. Um, approximate match is when you have uh, a certain range. Maybe um, you don't have an, an exact match is when you have a certain parameter and you you are sure it's in that table and you want it to to return approximate match is uh, when you have a certain range and excel tries to to place that parameter in that range but exact match is when you have the exact figure uh, in your data that you want it to re to return like now this uh, table that this one is putting um numerical score 70 uh wait uh just when you're trying to look for like numerical score of 71 should no yes, no we are, we are looking up for fear okay yeah which fear is we have fear in its yes. exact uh, way the way it's presented here we have yes. it exactly here. And uh, yes. maybe to add, thank you so much, Nicholas, for that. Maybe to yeah. add, um, you can only use approximate match if you're using numbers, if you are looking up for numbers. So um, in this uh, case, uh, Nicholas, don't mute yourself. You're still on the floor. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm, okay. I'm just helping you to, <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> just uh, confirming what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, so in, the, in this case, you are looking up for a number. And that number, we don't have an exact number. So we can only yes. look for an approximate uh, number that is presented yeah. in our table in a kind of a range. Uh, the one whereas, nearest. Yeah, whereas we, can, we cannot look for something nearest to fair. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so... <laughs> George uh, is nodding. I believe, uh, Nicholas, you you have a uh, hundred percent on that one. Good. Uh, thank you. Uh, but then, uh, I want to give uh, why 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 VLOOKUP is for me very important. I use it almost on a daily basis. It's one of the functions I want to advise my fellow students. Yes. One of the functions that can really uh, assist you, especially when we're working with. Uh, uh, a big a big data you know yeah. you, you have two minutes to present data 
and yes. you you are given a large data. So V lookup for me really really helps. Great. Uh, uh, Albert, uh, you wanted to say something? Maybe we have left. Oh no no no! I think uh, uh, Nicholas has just explained. Yes. Yeah, Nicholas just explained what I wanted to explain because uh, when you when you talk of um, uh, approximate match, yes, approximate match, it means that uh, you are looking up for um, a number that is close to yes, number that that is close to. Yes. But well, uh, the other one was uh, exact, exact match. Eh? Yes. Exact match means that you 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 have to come up with a specific yes. right. Yes. Yeah, a specific. Yeah. It should Good. be specific. Yeah. yeah. I, I want also, I think, I think this lesson is very important. Eh? Yes. Some of us, because I've never known that there's something like a V lookup and a H lookup. Those have been uh, dealing with data. Yes. A huge number of data for, for several days. Yes. And now I can, I can now be able to, to use this <laughs> to navigate yeah. through. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll not mention why you find some of the accountants um, in the big five wanting to commit suicide. It's because they are using a lot of energy to do something that Excel can do for them. So um, uh, I know most of you are very young. You need um, time to go out, meet friends, date and all that, um, instead of uh, doing zero grazing. Uh, in your company, you can meet other friends. So you do that by running Excel and you become uh, uh, very competent. You have your job, you, uh, your work is easier to, to do. And uh, there are so many opportunities. There are so many opportunities, especially when you want to go up the, ra the radar. I'm talking about people who are looking for uh, positions um, which require reporting, positions uh, like uh, chief accountant, we are talking about finance manager, we are looking for um, CFOs, we are looking for opportunities that are not even accounting kind of opportunities, like uh, the issue of uh, data analysis, there are so many opportunities. So you, you guys need to run this thing. Uh, that's the gospel that I'm preaching today. Good. So let's go um, and uh, learn um, a few things as accountants that we can utilize the VLOOKUP function. Did I leave somebody who had something they wanted to say? Timothy? Yes, uh, I, I was requesting if uh, I, I have you are recording the video. Is it possible that you share the slides after the class? Sorry? Come again, Timothy. Uh, I was saying, yes, I've seen you are recording, recording the class. Is it possible that you share with us after the, we are done with the session? Definitely. This video belongs to you guys. So I'll share with you. Don't worry. Okay, thank you. Great. So, anyone else who has a question? So, uh, how many of us are auditors? Auditors in the house? Any auditor? Any auditor in the house? So I'm going to uh, type some few accounts here. So I'll assume a very simplistic case, and uh, you'll forgive me, I don't have data to, to show this. Um, so let's assume this is a trial balance. 
So this is a trial balance for 20, 2019. And here you have account, you have amount here. So this, this is a trial balance and um, you have uh, some figures here. I just want to put some random numbers between 10,000 and 100,000. So I format that. So I have that information here. And then I have another table here with the same information but for a different uh, year. So these are random numbers, so they keep on changing. Yeah, and this gives me an opportunity to diverge, uh, diverge from lookup and train you how to do something. So every time I do an operation, look very closely, my figures keep on changing because they are random numbers. So for sake of time, allow me not to tell you so much about the random between um, function, but um, as you can see here, Excel will tell us what it does. It returns a random number between the numbers you specify. So I was looking for numbers between 10,000 and 100,000. So that is exactly what I get. But uh, now, because I want my numbers to be stat static, I need to do a copy special so that my numbers don't keep on changing. This also happens when, uh, for example, you have worked on your data and you have formulas and you want to remove the formulas from your data. So you do con control, C to copy, and then you right click, and then paste special. So there are various things here you can do, but the one I'm interested in is paste values. Paste value will remove the formulas and will make this figure st static. As you run Excel more, or, or as you play with data more, you realize that this comes in very hardly. So that's how you do it. So now my figures we are not going to change and they are static. So I want to show you an easier way of doing that. Control Z. Uh, if I go very fast, please note it down so that you can uh, ask uh, at a later point. So once you have selected the data that you want to copy special, take your cursor to any edge of your box and then you right click, right click, move your data out, return it where you want it to be and release. Once you release, you copy here as values only. This is one of those um, things in my class. I feel like I'm training guys to drive a manual car because uh, of the, the way you need to hold uh, the mouse and the key button and all that. But for now, that is not important. Um, so I have my trial balance here, but this now is for 20, 2018. And I want to bring my figures here for comparison purposes. So also this one, I need uh, to make it absolute because these figures are still changing. So I don't want them to change. I want them to be static. So I'll take this, move it out, and move it back, and release, copy here as values only. So this I can call it uh, 2019. Now this would be my comparative figures, 2018. And then I can use a VLOOKUP here, equals VLOOKUP tab. 
look up for fixed assets. Where are we looking up for this information? We are looking up for this information from this table. And then what is the quorum index of the item we want to return? It's quorum one, two. So we put quorum two. And what kind of uh, data do we have? We are looking up for fixed assets. Fixed asset cannot be approximate. So it, it has to be an exact match. So you select uh, false and then you tab. Remember, we have to absolute reference this and therefore we do function F4 to put dollar signs and then control enter. And then you fill that data downwards, control shift uh, number one to make it um, uh, uh, numbers uh, format. And then th there we have our information. And now here you can have your variance analysis. And then you can have, can select all these equals, equals this, minus this, control enter to fills all your data and uh, you have your report ready to go and present uh, of course with notes and so forth and so forth. So uh, as you can see, um, the VROOKUP functions uh, come in uh, HADE. So is there any question? Any particular question we have? On that, I know most of us uh, print copies. You have one copy printed here, another copy printed here. You keep on keying in the numbers, but as long as your data is presented, you're using the same chart of account. You don't need to sweat the small stuff. Just deploy a VROOKUP and it will give you the comparative figures. So any burning comment, any burning? Yes, yes, please, Nicholas. Uh, if I may comment there, for me, what works for me yes. is uh, if you name the, um, that data range. Yes. You see why we are checking the source? Yes. Like now that uh, balance when you're checking the previous year. Yes. Because I work, I work with the data that is sometimes 10,000 uh, items. Yes. So if you name it, say, if you call it data, and then when you go to VLOOKUP, yes. and then you call it, um, you just say, is it called, yeah, now name this one, yes. Ah, excellent. You call it, yeah, 2018, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, just call it data, maybe, yes. And then, yeah, just replace that with the data. Yeah, that that works uh, really well for me. Yeah, uh, don't go, uh, Nicholas. Thank you so much. Okay. Who, who trained you this? <laughs> you, <laughs> I, I give credit to you. There's, if I if I may divide a bit, uh, remember that that training came in. I think it was twenty seventeen. Yes, yes, yes. So VLOOKUP was uh, one of the things I learned from that training. You did a company training. Yeah, I remember. Now, um, Nicholas <laughs> has taken us uh, to something, and I. This is why I need you guys to keep on practicing this. This is called named ranges. And I'll tell you the reason as to why it's so important. Uh, and without Nicholas, I wouldn't have talked about this. And that's why I encourage you guys to keep on talking. So now named ranges are very important. For example, when I was writing my VROOKUP, VROOK, VROOKUP, uh, I'm looking up for fixed asset in this table. I had to go all the way to my sheet one to look for the table where mm -hmm. 
the data is located. But with uh, Nicholas uh, having named the information, I just need to do a VLOOKUP. I know where I'm looking up, uh, my value I'm looking up for fixed asset, where? I don't need to go back to that sheet. I just need to call up my data and write the word data. And you'll find it now, it's, it's a named range. That's a reason for another day, but it's something that I would encourage you on your free time to have a look at it. So you tab, and then it's uh, the column index is two, comma, and it's an exact match. Control, enter, and then this. So Nicholas, I'm really very proud of you uh, for that. Uh, most welcome, Walimu. <laughs> so, any other particular question? Yes, Felix. Hello. Yes, yeah. hi. hi, Malibu. Yes. And the team, I can't. Thank you for the lookup, Nicholas. Thank you for that. That's an eye opener. Thank you so much. Great. Any other comment? I think I will learn more from this thing. Most welcome. As I think from what I've seen, what I, okay, Karibu Sana. From what I've seen, I think there's so much to do in Excel. So, like as the Malimi is saying. We need to keep on practicing because there's a lot so much in Excel. If you don't catch up, Excel will throw you out of yeah. accounting. We really need to study. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Felix. Any other comments? Ibrin, Ibrin uh, say something. I'm okay, personally. Thank you so much. Good. Hope you're running something. Sure, I am. Great. So the, the, the data ranges is for another day. Uh, named ranges. Named ranges, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, um, what, 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 <laughs> what we are going to do? What What you are going to do in uh, the next lesson? Um, which we are going to look at uh, the match and the index. Now we are going to name our edges. So that uh, we, we continue building on that uh, knowledge that uh, Nicholas has imparted. Rainas, uh, say something. We have very senior people here with us. Uh, so young guys, uh, this is also a very nice place to meet uh, some of the most senior people we have uh, in Kenya, some very senior accountants, people I respect in, in the industry. So, yeah. Uh, Rainas, are you still with us? Yes, I'm there, and I'm learning a lot. This is very encouraging. I didn't know that uh, there's so much in Excel. Great, I love great, it. great. Yes. Sawa, sawa, Mzee wa kazi mwenyoki? Say something. Zao, we can hear you. Uh, Zao? Okay, Zao says Haru. Okay, so let's go back and uh, to more complicated uh, things. Um, so now we have uh, nested Vero Cup. Uh, this will be your take home. This is what I want you to go and sweat. And it's not as simple as what we have looked at. This is more complicated. And uh, I'll just explain to you how you're supposed to go ahead and work on it. So 
we have three tables here. The first one is our data set. The second one is showing us a state and a region. The third table is showing us uh, given the region and the number of dependents, the tax rate that is applicable. So uh, hope, ho hoping that uh, the recording is happening uh, and uh, it's clear, so you'll be able to refer to what I'm saying. So, uh, so um, sorry for that. Um, so here, what you're supposed to do is to find the regional tax rate. And the first stage of you is to find the state to which, uh, the region to which the state belongs. So you're going to look up for Florida or wherever uh, in this table and return the region. That's the first thing. So if I were you, I would change this to uh, region. And these two, tax rate. So the first thing you need to do is to find the region. So you are going to find the region to which this state belongs to. So like Florida, will belong to Florida, will belong to Southeast. Now, once you know it belongs to Southeast, this particular person has how many dependents? Has three dependents. So Southeast region, three dependents. So when you are a Southeasterner and you have three dependents, the tax rate that is applicable to you is 6%. So at the end of the day, I would want you to return a 6% here using a VLOOKUP. So these have made it easier for you. You are supposed to do a nested VLOOKUP, but now you'll do two VLOOKUPs. And later, uh, as you practice, you can make it one VLOOKUP. So for example, here we can say one, one VLOOKUP. And we can have people posting their answers uh, on, on, on the site and, and such. And this will help you to, to practice more. Once you are able to work on this one, I can tell you there is no kind of data that will confuse you as you use uh, VROCA. I hope that is clear unless uh, somebody has a question. Good. So let's go to um, the match function. Now, one of the failures that we have on the lookup function is when our data set changes. For example, if we go back to our approximate match and we change our data, and for example, here now we want to uh, to insert a column here. Control Shift Plus. If you want to insert a column there, you'll find that our data won't give us uh, the right information in terms of. Uh, let's copy that down. Out. So our data set changed because we inserted the quorum. And therefore, uh, our VLOOKUP, we have to do our VLOOKUP and change this quorum, quorum index to a three. Now, because we are looking up for the salary and what we want to return is in quorum one, two, three. So only that will uh, help us help our VLOOKUP to work. So we have two functions, other, v, uh, other lookup functions, that is match and index, which are used together 
to overcome that problem of uh, the viruca. And I would like to demonstrate how they work. So equals, um, so the, the match functions help us to look uh, for the position of a certain item in a range. So for example, if you have these numbers and you want to know where this number, particular number is located, then you can use, you can deploy a match function. So match a look a value, where are we looking up for, uh, for that information, the lookup array. Now, I want to give you this hint. Whenever you see an, uh, an argument saying an array, a table, resist from selecting a single cell. If you select a single cell, that function will not work because an array is a group of cells. That is a table, uh, a column, a row, or something like that. So select the whole column and then the match type. Remember, we are looking for an exact figure. This you can't find. Remember, this is text. This is not a number. This is text. So there is no way you'll find this. This is a social security number or a, a, an SS number as they call it in America. So you will not find a number that is uh, approximate to this. So this is an exact match. And then control and so this number seven means that this number is the seventh number in this array. And if you go to row number seven, you'll find your number there. So for example, let's copy this number. Let's put it here. Control V, the number changes. Very simplistic. And I'll show you in a moment why we need the match function to tell us where a certain item is uh, located. So let me go back to you. Let me know whether I'm speaking to myself or you are understanding. Any particular question? I think it's clear. It's clear. Thank you. So let's go ahead. Now, we have another function that we use with a match function, and it's called the index function. So now, the index function is a lookup function that helps us to tell what information is is located at the intersection between a low and a column. So for example, if I put, um, if I highlight this data in yellow and this data in yellow, uh, the index function is going to tell us this figure. And this figure is located at the intersection between uh, column F and row number four. So let me demonstrate. So equals index tab. What is our array? Our array is this data, this data set here. Sorry, let me let me back up. Let me back up and uh, explain something. The first thing, as I said, we need to understand our data before we even put up. Uh, uh, a function. We need to ad understand our data. So here we are dealing with um, uh, like a postage kind of information. Uh, the people like FedEx, the people like um, uh, UPS, Posta, they use this kind of uh, uh, data to, to determine uh, how much they are going to uh, charge for a shipping item to a shipping zone. So here you have shipping zones. These numbers can be Nyeri, Nairobi, names of places. Are we together? They can be names of places. 
And then these can be, size, uh, the sizes can be 10 grams, uh, 1 kg and such. So don't get confused by the numbers. We have just uh, simplified the data so that uh, it can work to whatever uh, we are looking to demonstrate. So having understood that this is a table to be able to tell us if we are shipping an item from uh, shipping zone number four, and that item is uh, whatever size, this is the charge that we are going to charge. And on the, um, on the right, we have names of items. So don't get confused by these numbers. These are item codes. Then the size, size number five, shipping zone number four. So if you are shipping an item from uh, 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 an item with size five to shipping uh, zone number four, five to shipping number number four, then you'll be charged uh, 34 uh, shillings and 89 cents. And as you can see, we have quite some, some data here. Our data extends uh, to so many cells downloads. You can see we have 500 uh, rows of data. So we need to deploy uh, an, an index uh, uh, kind of um, a function to be able to tell us uh, what will be the shipping cost. So equals index, index, uh, the index starts with an array. So they have to mute someone. There's somebody who is making noise. Good. So, so the index function is asking us for an array. Uh, so what is our array? Our array is this information. Uh, categorically, I have chosen only my data. This is not uh, custom stone. Depending on what you select, it will determine uh, what kind of arguments that you'll put in the next two arguments. The second, um, item in our syntax is the row number. So which row are we looking uh, for the information from? And in this particular scenario, which we have this item, the size is size number five. And size number five is located in row number one, two, three, four, five. Again, don't get confused with the numbers. This is just a coincidence. Sometimes you have a uh, 10 grams, three grams, and all that here in terms of sizes. So it is size um, size five, which is located in row five. And then the shipping zone is shipping zone that is located on column four. One, two, three, four. So you select that, and then. Uh, make sure that, uh, uh, as uh, our friend told us, uh, sorry, I had forgotten that, we need to name this as our data. So shipping cost. Shipping, shipping cost. As you have noted, you can't have a gap in when you're naming data ranges. You can only capitalize uh, the way Akina Jarida and uh, Ivrin do when they are doing hashtags. So you can't have a space. If you have a space, it will tell you that it's not a valid. So make sure that you put, a, you capitalize each word or put um, um, an underscore. So shipping, shipping, Shipping cost, cost. So I've capturized my work so that it makes it easier. So every time now I can select uh, my name and it can select my data. So here we are just building on that uh, topic that has cropped up of naming of data ranges. 
So we are using the array, uh, the index function, index function tab. What is our array? Our array, we already have named it to shipping cost. So select the shipping cost. And then where are we looking? What is our row number? And we have said the row number is row number five uh, because it is uh, situated in row number five and our shipping zone is a shipping zone that is in on column four. So control enter and then you you copy down uh, your formula and your information is filled. So we can check a few. As an accountant, I always uh, encourage you to go back and check whether your formulas are working. People have been sacked for using uh, wrong formulas and they think uh, uh, the information is correct. So always have that um, character of an accountant or an auditor that is called professional skepticism. So you go in your data and check uh, whether it has uh, populated the way you expected. Um, so here we are looking at um, size number one and uh, shipping zone number six. Uh, so one and six, 26, 29, 26, 29, um, five, two, five, two, 21, 89. And um, our index function has done what we expected it to do. So before I proceed, I'm going to come back to you and here if you have any particular question on the index function. Before we go and de deploy it. Good. Is Evans here? Evans? No, I can't see Evans. Um, anyone, anyone on uh, the index function? You can even say I'm lost. I think it's good. Uh, thank you. Good. Any other comment on the index function? Uh, I will catch up. I'll catch up through okay. the video. I think I was lost somewhere. On the way okay anyone else so good for the sake of time that's the index function now i want to show you the collaboration between the index function and the match function for those of you who have used our payroll uh, template uh, that we came up with, there's nothing else that we have deployed apart from index and match, um, data validation, um, very, very, very simple Excel functions. And by the end of this uh, lesson, you can be able to make your own uh, uh, payroll template and start setting it. Isn't that a good thing to do in these times of Corona and uh, um, quarantine? I know some of us unfortunately are not working and uh, it's unfortunate. Most probably we will not have a salary for this uh, month. So there are things you can do out there. People ask me, what can I do if I'm not employed? There are so many things that you can be able to do. So I'm just challenging you uh, to get out of your nest. Don't just look at, at to employment. You can even consult. And this is one of the areas, the whole world, there is need for people who can be able to uh, make solutions using Excel. So that's a big challenge. So, as always, let's understand our data. So here we have sales of different type of IT accessories for different months. Now, assume this is um, an IT kiosk and uh, somebody is compiling uh, data. 
for the kiosk. So we have uh, disk drives, CD drives, and so forth and so forth, and then the sales for each particular month, and they have been populated. So, and this is uh, like uh, uh, their revenue um, uh, statements uh, for the whole year. So here we want to deploy uh, a collaboration between the index and March to help us to tell what are the sales for a particular month given a particular IT accessory. For example, if we want to know the sales for March for DVD drives, assume this is a uh, Nakumat, assume this is um, uh, assume this is uh, uh, any other supermarket that you know, and they have a thousand, thousands and thousands of items that they sell. And you don't want uh, to keep on going back and referring to uh, the data ranges, you want to deploy an index and match uh, collaboration so that you can get you, your data or information at a click of a button. So, for example, uh, we can use a, a match function to tell us what is the location of uh, January in this, in this uh, list. Um, so equals match. So the match function returns the relative position of an item in an array that matches a specific value uh, in a specified order. So in this case, let's first of all name our data. Uh, remember here I've included my totals. So let's call it uh, sales. Sales, enter. So equals. Uh, so still we need to to know what products we are selling. So we can say product SKUs, uh, whatever you want to name them, and this we can call them months. Thank you so much, Nicholas. This is not a lesson that we would uh, have taught today, but thank you so much for... Welcome, welcome. Yeah, so using the, in, uh, the March function, we just want to know where is the particular month uh, that we are looking for, uh, where is it held? And uh, this now, Guys, I'm going to a second lesson. We are still in the first lesson for lookup functions. I know time, uh, we, we are off with time, but um, I'll stay here until uh, we can uh, finish this particular uh, lesson. So uh, we were to look at two lessons, that is data validation and uh, lookup functions. So I'm, I'm building the uh, the second topic in uh, in uh, the first lesson so data validation helps us to tell excel what kind of data uh, uh, that can go to a particular cell so we have various types of data we have uh, text we have dates we have numbers we have decimals we have whole numbers and such and uh, uh, if you look at um, the, the KRA forms that we use, when you enter a pin that is not 11 digits, it tells you that you have made a mistake. And that is absolutely made through using of data validation. It is not uh, a rocket science. It's a very simple thing that everyone can be able to do. And I'll demonstrate that in a moment. So for example, if this particular cell you want people to enter a pin and you know a pin has to have 11 digits this is how you do the data validation so you go to data then data validation you select what type of data are we dealing with we are dealing with 
uh, text. A pin is a text. And we want our text to be equal to 11 digits. So you type 11 there and you click OK. So you can uh, do your pin here. A, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then enter. If you agree uh, for your pin, as long as you put 11 digits. Let me delete one and see what happens. It tells you that the information you have put does not match the data validation restrictions. So you can say retry. And it will not allow you to put a wrong pin. So let me go back and uh, build on that. Still, you can put a message to tell the person what you expect them to do. And you do that before you find uh, your um, data validation uh, window or um, dialog box uh, at the settings tab. So you need to put uh, it, um, you select the input message and the input message is input your pin. So anytime somebody select that cell, they'll see that message. So they know what information you're looking for. So somebody cannot put their name. They cannot put the, the name of their girlfriend there or anything else. They know exactly what you're telling them to do. So anybody just comes and puts any information, the information will be rejected. Now, to make it uh, easier, you'll also be able to give some information to the person who makes an error. Uh, you can give them an error message. Uh, for example, um, invalid, invalid data or get a life, you are putting the wrong information. See me, kuja namzazi, whatever information you want to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to give there. It will be shown whenever somebody um, makes an error. So that's data validation. And for data validation, you can validate the data by by um, text length, whole number, decimal, list, date, time, text length, and so forth and so forth. So we have already looked at text length and we look at a list. So uh, the rest, I'll, I would invite you to uh, go and evaluate how you can use them. The most complicated is the custom and we can do, do this um, at a later date uh, in, in our lessons. But uh, the rest are pretty easy. And once you run uh, the, the one, the, the other ones, you can always, uh, when you run the list and um, the text uh, length, the rest would be very easy. It is data driven. So if you're looking at uh, uh, the information to be inputted in that particular cell as time, and you want to validate it for time, you use these for data, uh, for date, for whole numbers, for decimals, and such and such. <coughs> um, I'm going to show you how to uh, do data validation using a list. So, Click the particular cell you want to validate, go to data, data validation, and click on data validation. We are validating um, by using a list. Here we are looking for the month from this particular uh, list here. So the source of our list is, actually we can, we can type, um, months. Uh, what did you call it? Months. Just a moment. 
So we, we can select, yeah, we can select and uh, our name comes there. So we could have typed that or, uh, or we can select our data. This comes in handy when uh, you have the data in uh, another uh, sheet and you don't keep on, want to keep on changing your sheets. So as you can see, we have a drop down list. And um, I would challenge you uh, for the sake of time, when you go to, uh, to do your practice, you put an input message and an error message. The input message will be select a particular map. That is it. So then we want to do the same thing for the product. And we want to come up uh, with a drop down list that you select all these items. And remember, I have included the totals. So data validation, uh, here we are looking for a list and our list is called products equals products. And then we have our drop down list and you can select any particular uh, two combinations. Now, I want to stop at that point. Uh, I know I've taken new uh, marathon, so I want to take particular questions. Any particular question? Guys, are you still there? Some present. Hi, Amina. Hi. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah. And following? Yeah, and I'm following. Great. Good. So let me continue. So once you have selected um, uh, a particular month and a particular product, you want down here, uh, the information that will be displayed will be uh, the location of uh, February or whichever particular month that you have selected. So equals, what is the, uh, the function we are using, the match function. So we are looking up for February from the list, the lookup array is month and we have it here, you select it and then you tab and it's an exact match, zero. Control and two. So depending on the month that you have selected, you'll be told uh, using a match function that it's the second month. So if I select December or September, I'll be told it's the ninth month and so forth and so forth. So now uh, my information has started to be dynamic. Good. So now I want to know whichever particular product I've selected, what it is its location in this array. So equals March. I'm looking up for this particular product and the lookup array is a product. This one, then tab, and then it's an exact match. So I put a zero, control, and So CD drives is the second, one, two. So if I select like the total, which is combined, it will be the fifth, one, two, three, four, five. So it doesn't matter what I've selected. So my numbers will always change. So equals, now we want to use an, in, an index function to tell us what is the sales for November, uh, what are the total sales for November? Equals index, what is the array we are looking at? is the sales, sales data, 
which select that, and the row number, what's the row number? The row number is our month offset. Remember we looked for November using a match function and we were told it's in row number 11. So the index function will come to row number 11 here, and it will be waiting for us to tell us, uh, to tell it what column are we, uh, do we want it to go and look for, for the, uh, the sales uh, volume. So here it's um, uh, the combined uh, row, uh, sorry, combined column. So the index function will come to November and then it will go to the combined, the combined column and it will return this figure. Um, so let's do enter and you find the figure is 18,461 and it's the exact. Now, when you change these, they keep on changing. So, for example, the sales for August for CD drives, August CD drives is 2,081. You change this to drives, August DVD drives, August DVD drives is 50, 77, and so forth and so forth. So, any particular questions? Any question, guys? Any question on data validation? Good, I'll assume that everyone is following. So, the same way we could have used a single formula to be able to get to where we have gotten. So, equals, excuse me, equals index, <coughs> the, the array, the array is um, the sales data. The row number is the the match function. We we need to write a match function to find where uh, the particular month is located in this list. And this this is the particular uh, formula that we wrote here, which is match. Match the lookup value is August. And our lookup array is month. And the match type is an exact match. Is a zero. And then we close the bracket. Now we need to know what is the column number. The column number is another match function. Match, the lookup value is the DVD drives. And we are looking up for them in the products list. Product list. And the lookup is an exact look uh, match. And then we are done and we can enter and it gives us the same uh, formula. Uh, sorry, the same uh, sales volume. So this might be a bit complicated. Uh, you might think this is programming or something, but we are just building up on uh, what we did here. And what we are just doing is to copy this formula and inserting it inside here. And this formula has only become a bit easier because of what Nicholas uh, told us about um, uh, the, the named ranges. So here you would have 
uh, cell uh, like F, F2 and um, uh, J, J14. Those would be uh, the references and it would have been very complicated. But because of the named ranges uh, solution uh, that is provided by Excel, then our formula looks a bit neat. So um, as you can see, our sales now are dynamic, uh, depending on which month you select. And uh, this actually, uh, if I can reveal, this is how we uh, do our pay slips in our, in our payroll, uh, payroll um, uh, uh, product that we have out there. So it, it just goes to the payroll, checks which particular uh, stuff you are looking at and uh, which quorum are we referring to. For example, the net salary. And it depicts the net salary and uh, it reports it in a different cell. So uh, again, if you want to, uh, to do a table, you can do uh, Alt F1. So R F one and sorry, you can use function eleven. Function F eleven. Function F eleven will take you to another table, uh, but um, you can use Alt F one. Alt F one and you'll have uh, a graph. So you can have a nice graph here. And depending on the selection, the graph is dynamic. So the graph keeps on changing. And this is very nice. It's something to boast about, uh, especially when you're presenting your data and uh, you can be able to show different scenarios to your board, your managers, or whomever you're presenting the data to. So guys, any question? Well, this one needs a lot of practice. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Nicholas. So, any question? Hello. Hello. Hey, Jerida. Yes. Yes. Uh, say something. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay. okay. I'm okay. Felix? Hello. I have, a, I have a concern on the, on what you've just shown us. Yes. It looks more complex. How, how can one affect that, to do all that? Uh, practice, practice. And uh, you, 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 I, I can tell from your voice you are very young. So spend your years um, uh, <laughs> very wisely. <laughs> practice. Yes, practice. I'm very young. I'm still very young. Yes. I'm still very young. I work as a consultant. And that's yes. what I do. So I, I, I tend to learn more yes. because I, I happen to encounter different clients in different fields. So like the more knowledge I get, yeah. the better for me. Yes, I agree with yeah. you. Yeah, and you have um, a great future ahead of you. Thank you so, so much. It, it, I'm humble. Yeah. Karibu sana. Any other comment uh, and we are coming to the end of our class we have run um, lookup functions we have run uh, data validation so i don't know um, if we have any questions uh, regarding those two particular topics or comments before we can have um, uh, a chit chat, uh, we can have one or two people.
uh, talking to us about various issues. You can share how we are handling this break, um, uh, Corona break, how we are celebrating the first awkward uh, Easter. So, yeah. So, uh, do we have any questions regarding the topics that uh, we have covered right now? Since that we don't have, um, so uh, Nicholas, uh, do you have something for us? You would want to share with us? No, it's just to encourage uh, yes. people to uh, I always come to always to yes. this forum uh, in case I have any any work out yes. there, and the people in this forum all are always uh, so professional. Yes. And it's all, always my genuine concern that to say Diane Kupata Kazi. So especially in this uh, coronavirus time, yes, where people are at home, people need uh, work. Let's help each other. And if we are helping each other, then the economy will improve. So thank you so much, uh, Jason, for this forum. Great. Uh, I really appreciate uh, Nicholas um, for your. Uh input in the group, especially for finding these young accountants uh, uh, work, um, we really appreciate. So if all of you, uh, the likes of Evelyn, you have jobs there. Um, whomever has a job, please feel free to uh, send it to the group so that the young accountants can, can take up the opportunity and uh, apply for the job. Anyone else who has um, any comment? Anyone else who has a comment? Uh, Rainas, talk to the young accountants. Thank you. Thank you, Jason, for this session that we have held. And uh, to my fellow yeah. accountant, I know sometimes there will be challenges in our profession, and especially when uh, in many organizations, accountants are treated like a cost center. Uh, but be encouraged, be encouraged. And thank you very much for those who uh, in the forum have seen the, when they have opportunity, they have shared. And uh, the questions yes. that are raised in the, in the forum, I can see people sharing out their suggestion, their opinion, which is encouraging also, because in this field, yes. nobody who can, uh, sincerely see that we are perfect. Yeah, you may yes. encounter challenge, so it is always good when we share it out and what uh, uh, one it become very easy. Thank you very much, and uh, may God bless you, Jason, for your continued great. support even to to us. Great, great. Uh, I really appreciate. Um, maybe next time you can tell us um, how um, the coronavirus has affected. Uh, the church and its finances and all that. Uh, I know that might be confidential information, but uh, <laughs> be ready to share with us about that. Um, um, any person who has uh, any other comment? Ominde? I can see you are unmuting yourself. Yeah, and by the way, uh, also Jerinda. Jerinda still is in uh, the church industry, uh, so you guys need to do a write-up for us how the tithes and uh, the sadaka has been affected, uh, what um, uh, missions you have come up with, uh, to mitigate uh, the coronavirus thing, the issue of uh, holding church services and all that. I hope you have opened the pay bill and uh, numbers for people to tithe and such. So, uh, Eddie, all the way from Mombasa with Rav, uh, are you still in Mombasa or you have relocated? Hello. Yes. Yes, yes, I'm in Mombasa, eh? Okay. 
I'm still in Mombasa. Actually, ah. I've enjoyed the class. I've uh, learned a lot. I didn't know much about uh, VLOOKUP, uh, the data consolidation, but at least now I'm somewhere. And, uh, thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Keep on learning. Keep on learning. Keep on challenging yourself. Uh, I know you have always wanted to attend uh, our class, but because of um, the distance, um, you have not uh, made it. So keep on challenging yourself. I hope I'll keep on uh, having these uh, classes. Um, so guys, any suggestion on uh, topics to handle tomorrow? Because tomorrow I want to have another class um, on Excel. The reason as to why I'm doing Excel, for Excel I don't need to have a lot of uh, time to prepare. And um, if you guys uh, keep on suggesting the topics that you want us to handle, um, then we can start diverging to issues like uh, taxation, uh, financial reporting uh, issues, uh, like uh, budgeting issues, uh, like um, um, uh, modeling and, and, and such. Uh, so tomorrow, I on, uh, at the same time, I uh, will do another class, uh, God willing, and uh, we'll handle different topics. So I don't know, for those who are conversant with um, Excel, I don't know which areas uh, you would want me to handle uh, in tomorrow's class. You are always welcome to attend the class. Uh, yeah, so I, I need those suggestions because I don't want to train what you guys don't want. I want to be driven by the needs, uh, the particular needs that, that we have in the market. So I know most people have talked about uh, pivot uh, tables. Um, so I want uh, to hear which other topics you want uh, to be taught on uh, so that um, we can handle them in uh, tomorrow's uh, class. And and sorry, um, Excel, Excel, you keep on building on um, the particular um, um, knowledge that you get. So this is not how we handle our classes. Our classes, we start with introduction, then we keep on building uh, on the basics and such, but uh, because this uh, class is um, is a is a a short class, that's why we are handling particular lessons. So we start by doing an introduction, uh, showing you the kind of shortcuts uh, that we use and such. Uh, but uh, for this uh, particular one, we are diving uh, directly into. Uh, a particular topic. So just in case uh, you feel that uh, the the training uh, you want uh, is specific, you can talk to us. Uh, we have this uh, online training and such, and uh, we can customize it uh, to your needs. Um, also, I would uh, request you to go and like uh, our YouTube uh, our YouTube channel, there are some old videos. The quality might not be as good, but depending on what information you are looking at, um, you'll be able to uh, get some information. So um, that is it. So unless there's anyone else who has um, a comment, uh, a question, um, the, I'm going to send uh, uh, an invite uh, to all of you uh, for tomorrow's uh, meeting. Um, feel free, if you don't want to attend, that is well and good. Uh, we are still going to record uh, uh, the presentation and uh, uh, depending on the time that it will take to edit it, um, we will have it uh, uh, on the group or on uh, our Facebook forum, our LinkedIn and uh, uh, WhatsApp forums are for you to refer to. Uh, so with that, uh, uh, thank you so much. Don't go without saying a word. Uh, so once you say a word, you can, you can sign out.
Hello guys, my name is Collins. I'd like to wish you to stay safe during this corona period. Use your masks. Always remember to sanitize. I've enjoyed the class. I'm looking forward to the next one tomorrow. Thank you, Collins. Yeah, hello. Hello. Hello, my, my name is George and uh, I've really enjoyed the the class. I think uh, things to do with Excel is is a topic that is very interesting and I didn't know it it had so much. Okay. Thank you so much and uh, I hope to attend tomorrow's meeting uh, tomorrow's class and guys stay, stay safe. Good. Hello guys, I'm Albert. Well, at least today I've learned something. I'm somewhere now, not like before. I didn't know that Excel is this white. I thought that I was uh, an Excel guru, but now <laughs> I know that there's some other things that I don't know. So uh, let's meet before. Good, yeah. thank you. Hi guys. Hi Jerida. Hello. Yes, Jerida here. And I uh, would like to say that I'm learning a lot. I'm a repeater, <laughs> as you had said earlier, but I'm enjoying and stay yes. safe. Thank you. So the rest of the guys say something, then you sign out. And it was a very, very good forum. Uh, thank you so much. And let's continue practice. It's always my joy to see people learning yes. and um, improving their skills. Thank you so much. Hello. Hi, Sophia. Hi, Sophia here. Great. Okay, I would like to say I've enjoyed the class. Thank and you. Uh, I look forward for the tomorrow's class. Thanks so much. Karibu sana. Hi, guys. Yeah. Hi, Ominde. Hi. Hi, this is Kaksun Ominde. I've enjoyed the class. I want to appreciate you, teacher, for this session. I've been longing to attend one last week. I didn't manage because of the environment, but I'm happy. I've learned some things that I need to work on. Yes. And I look forward to attending tomorrow's lesson. Great. God bless you. God bless the team. And let's continue this way. Thank you. Hey, hello, guys. Hi, Kevin. Yeah, I'm Kevin. Yes, thank you for the good session which you have had, and uh, thank you for making me learn a thing or two regarding Excel. And uh, I hope I learn more and more and perfect my skills. Thanks a lot. Karibu sana. Any other? Kevin, uh, Kevin has said something. Amina Chiang, uh, Stephen, good, I, I think uh, with that we come to the end of our lesson, so you guys stay safe, um, um, wish you all the best, uh, wish you a uh, happy Easter, um, stay safe, Wear the mask and don't lose hope. I know some of us, uh, uh, their salaries have been stopped and everything. So whatever is happening, it's just a crowd that is passing. So don't lose hope. Uh, we will be back. Uh, the world will, um, um, will overcome this coronavirus thing and uh, we will be better. And that is why we are doing this, so that when we go back to our jobs, we we star in, in those jobs. Um, so 
we we are not just uh, staying idle uh, and complaining about uh, the government measures we are not complaining about uh, the coronavirus thing but we are taking advantage of this scenario uh, to improve our our knowledge and uh, therefore when this holding is um, is over we are going to emerge uh, victorious and we will have improved our skills, we we'll look for them jobs, we we'll look for them uh, uh, promotions and such. So, asanteni sana, na mungu wa bariki, kwa herini.